How are you doing? I'm Dr. Bassine. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Meet Dr. Bassine, cardiologist and medical director of the imaging lab at Sentara Heart Hospital. Um, tell me about the uh, the symptoms you were having. Uh, I have no real symptoms except you know I have COPD and almost chronic shortness of breath. Dr. Bassine's days are busy ones. They start here at the Sentara Heart Hospital Imaging Center. Dr. Bassine will be seeing patients who were referred by their physicians for cardiac imaging scans. Uh, on my patients, before we um, scan them on the CT scanner, before they get their heart scans or cardiac MRIs, but particularly the cardiac CTs, I like to examine the patient, get an idea of why they're here. This patient, Warren Murphy, is getting a cardiac CT scan because he's been having shortness of breath. It's the first step to finding out what's wrong, if he has a blockage in an artery, and if so, how to treat it. So Barbara is uh, positioning Mr. Murphy on the um, cardiac heart scanner here. Um, she's already uh, put in a, a catheter into his arm. What, does he have an IV already, Barbara? Okay. There's an IV in his arm, and we're going. To, she's starting to hook up some of the safety monitoring equipment uh, so that we can watch his heart rate. This is the latest uh, heart scanner that's available uh, at most major heart centers throughout the country. It's called a 64 slice cardiac CT scanner, and it is the uh, it is the best way we have to take pictures of the heart without having to go inside the patient's body. It shows us the arteries on the surface of the beating heart, the ones that cause heart attacks. The CT scan takes only 15 minutes, but gives doctors a very complete picture of what's going on. So we can tell from the first scan that he's certainly been smoking a long time. Dr. Bassine will read and evaluate the scans, including Warren's. He'll then determine if additional tests are needed and report the findings back to the patient's physician. What's, what's the exciting part of your job? I mean, what, what really gives you a charge? The exciting part of my job is to, when I get the oppor opportunity to identify a person with premature heart disease who didn't know it and who, for example, had no indication to be on any medicines for it, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm really changing the course of that person's life by identifying heart disease early, getting them on good medicines. And it's not just CT scans. Dr. Bassine also sees patients undergoing cardiac MRIs for another very different look at their hearts. Cardiac MRIs can show movies of the heart, allowing doctors to look at the motion of the patient's blood moving through the heart. Debbie and I are discussing a, a plan for uh, scanning a, a patient who's uh, coming in in the next hour. Uh, I always review the office notes when we do a cardiac MRI. Cardiac MRI is, a, is this scanner here. It's a, it's a, is more complex um, than a cardiac CT in that there's a lot of different types of scans we can do. After a morning of scans, Dr. Bassine checks in on patients. What do you typically do? You go in and read their, their chart? Yeah, so I first, I first uh, go in and uh, read the patient's chart, gather our whatever information I can. In this case, um, I have not met this gentleman before. Um, my partners have been taking care of him. He was transferred up here from another hospital for bypass surgery, um, which he had. So I... Uh, You're trying to see what he needs from you? So I'm just say how he was doing over the weekend. It's Monday morning, so I want to see how he was doing over the weekend. Huh? I don't know how he's doing over the weekend before I go in there. I know what the issues have been over the last few days and, and see what I can do. My part is to add to his care. You know, you were up walking around, the nurse told me. How'd you feel doing that? I was pretty good. I didn't get wind or nothing. Okay. Doctors listen for all kinds of different sounds. One thing is the regularity of the heart. One of the common sounds we hear after bypass surgery is what's called a rub. It's actually the heart itself rubbing against the lining of the heart. It sounds like like scratching, um, and that's pretty common. What would be what would be something you wouldn't want to hear in his particular case? Um, a murmur that wasn't there before is would be a very bad thing. After seeing more patients, Dr. Bassine then goes back to the imaging lab to look at scans taken that morning, including Warren's. The computer is smart enough. We've uh, put in some parameters. It's smart enough to identify in yellow 
any calcified plaque within the coronary arteries. So what you want is be, to be able to scroll through this whole thing without seeing any yellow. And he has significant crud in that main vessel. That's called the left main vessel. So a blockage here would prevent blood from going down the entire front of the heart and down the entire side of the heart. So regardless of whether it looks significant or not, we really need to know that location is very dangerous. With the heart scan showing that Warren may need additional testing, a call was made to his cardiologist. John, I've had a chance to review uh, Mr. Murphy's uh, images, and it, it does look like he has significant plaque in his vessels, and uh, he should be followed up with some further testing. Dr. Bassine feels strongly that advanced imaging technology for the heart will have a significant impact on heart disease. I, I think 10 years from now, if I can look into my crystal ball, there's going to be a lot of patients approximately the age of 40 to 50 who have no sign of heart disease who are going to be doing these scans on as a screening test in a way to identify the early signs of heart disease. I think it's going to improve our, the rates of heart attack, rates of mortality from 